Hi, it's Jessie. Today I'm drinking wild mint tea from Roar because I recorded a review for it, so I figured I should probably drink it in a video. Um, and that's just a blend of green tea and spearmint. It's very hot. So, uh, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> I haven't posted my March April wrap up. I recorded one and never posted it. It is now mid June. Uh, this is for a couple reasons, but in short, I'm just gonna stop doing wrap ups. I don't like doing them monthly because, like, wrap ups take a lot of time and energy, particularly to edit. Um, and I don't want to do them monthly because of that, because I just don't have the time to do a monthly wrap up. But doing them even bi monthly, they were getting ridiculously long. My March April wrap up was like 50 minutes of footage, so it was just a lot. But I do like updating you about what I've been reading, and I do like just talking about the books I've been reading, not in a formal review way. Um, so, what I think I'm gonna do is a seasonal tops and bottoms, uh, best and worst every season. So, for spring, that's what this one will be. This would be covering books I read March, April, May. And for each season, I'll do the five best books I read in that season. And then if there was any bombs, so, you know, two to three books every season, that was just, this was awful and I wish I hadn't read it kind of vibe. So let's get into those for spring of 2021. Um, so to narrow down what might be my favorites from the season, I only looked at books that got four or more stars in my rating system, which for March, April, and May gave me 21 books to choose from. <laughs> and narrowing it down to a top five was harder than expected. <laughs> um, so I eliminated rereads. There were a few rereads in the season, so I eliminated those. And then the next thing I kind of took off was any series that I've completed because I do separate series reviews, so those books have kind of already been talked about. So while there were some phenomenal books uh, I read in spring as far as series go, I'm not gonna include those. But uh, when it comes out, is it out? My Wayfarers series review, I love those. Um, so in no particular order, my five favorite books of the spring of 2021. First up, Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. I love this book. So this book is about the mid-20th century South, I think mid-20th century, um, and is about the KKK, but they are literal monsters, not the metaphorical awful racist monsters, but literal monsters. And it's about this group of Pac women, um, women of color, who hunt them. And it's a little bit ridiculous of a concept, but it's so well done. And you get this like lovely metaphor for how racism is just ugly and it's just an excuse to be hateful. And it was really well done and I really enjoy it. I have not disliked a P. Jelly Clark book I've read yet. So I'm going to keep reading his stuff because I've really enjoyed it. Second up. Oh, I should have gotten books off of the shelf. I forgot I own this now. Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I actually bought a copy of this because I loved it so much. I went to my Barnes and Noble like every day for like two weeks trying to find this because the website online said they had it and I couldn't find it. And then finally I saw it and it was shelved in sci-fi. So that's why it took me so long. Um, anyway, this book is about several people and they're in a world in which they all belong to different tribes that worship a slightly different god. Um, and the one, the crows, have been kind of disgraced for a while. Um, and there's a faction that wants to bring them back into more power that are kind of more culty. And it's just about the interweaving of these cults. But then, so some of the point of views kind of focus more on that. But then the other point of views are the ship captain, Tovia, Toya? and Serapio, who is a young boy, who really just, not a young boy, he's older than I think he is, but I picture him as a young boy, but he's like my age, um, who just has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, the poor guy. Um, and it's just, 
I don't even know how to describe how much I love this because it was just so incredible. It's so beautifully written. It is a little bit, a lot of bit graphic. Um, so just something to be aware of, but it's just, it was absolutely wonderful. So again, no particular order, but uh, number three on my favorites for spring of 2021 was The Midnight Bargain by Seal Polk. Uh, this was not something I expected to love as much as I did. It's kind of sold as a magical Jane Austen novel, and I think that's kind of an appropriate marketing for it. It's about a, a fantasy realm, or not really realm, it's, it's a slightly more fantastical world in which everybody has the ability to access magic, but women are restricted from it because if a woman uses magic while pregnant, it can horribly corrupt the child. And there's some stuff going on with that. And so women, once they get married, are forced to wear these collars that prevent them from ever using magic. And it's about the journey of these two women from drastically different backgrounds, both trying to avoid getting married in order to maintain their magic ability. And there's a, you can bond a greater demon spirit, greater spirit, uh, and that will prevent you from ever having your magic taken away. Uh, and so there's that, there's a romance in there. It's just lovely. And it's not the most explicitly gay book I've ever read, but there's something about it that just gives really good gay vibes, you know? Um, and it's just, it was just delightful. Like, I don't know, it was just sweet. It took a while for me to get into it, but once I was into it, I was swept off my feet. Number four would be To Be Taught a Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Oh, this blew me away. I have been wanting to read Becky Chambers for a while, two years ago now, almost three. Wow, has it been that long? Uh, a librarian at a school I worked at recommended uh, Long Way to a slow, Small Angry Planet to me as a book to read. And I'm not a big sci-fi person. Like, I, I just don't, it's not something I gravitate towards. But she recommended it, she said I would love it. And I just never got around to reading it. Um, and so my friend Josh wanted to read To Be Taught a Fortunate. And I was like, yeah, sure, I've been wanting to give Becky Chambers a shot. Giving, starting with a novella seems like a great choice. And boy, was it. Um, so this is about a sh the crew of a research vessel and they've kind of, it's been a while and it kind of skips through time a lot, but it's been a while since they've been in contact with anyone and they're starting to wonder what they should do because they have enough fuel and supplies for like one or two more planets to visit, but like should they keep going or should they use that to come back to Earth immediately and they're trying to make that decision and it's just so wonderfully complex yet simple. It, it definitely doesn't, it's not as hard hitting as the Wayfarer series. It doesn't have as much of the deep messages there. It's a much more simple message about like the purpose of science and how to respectfully learn. Um, and it was just really well done. And I think she has this beautiful prose, Becky Chambers has this beautiful prose where she will explain these really complex scientific ideas in a way that is accurate, but simple to understand. And that's mm -hmm. such a talent. And that's such a talent to have. Like, it was amazing. And number five for my favorites of the spring. So this is one, I don't think that vlog's gonna be out before this. We'll see what order I upload things in. Um, but this is Love After the End, which is a Indigiqueer and two person, no, two spirit, sorry. It, it's an Indigiqueer and two spirit anthology of uh, Native American and First Nations peoples, people, First Nations and Indigenous and Native American authors writing kind of sci fi stories that were all full of very, they're full of hope. And the concept behind this anthology is the idea that the First Nations and Native peoples have already been through an apocalypse, so what would it be like for them to go through another one, kind of, was the concept. Um, and some of them took it in a more metaphorical direction, some took it more literal, and it was just, it's rare for an anthology to like strike me as I love this. There was a couple stories in there that didn't hit quite as hard, 
um, that were kind of more in that like three star range, but most of the stories were four or five stars. I absolutely love this anthology. All right, so then that brings us to our lows of the spring, which again, I don't want to be overly negative with this. This is just kind of for me to gush about books that I loved for the most part, but I do want to talk about some of the books that let me down a little this month. So I have three on this list. One is a DNF, one was just horribly disappointing. The other one I didn't really have a lot of expectations but didn't like it anyway. So I'm gonna start with that one because that's the least interesting. And I didn't write the authors down for these because this is the only author I don't know. Every Last Fear by Alex Finney, Finney, I don't know, the cover will be up here because I don't remember the author. This is a mystery. Um, it was just kind of meh. Um, the concept here is that there is a boy at college when his family takes a vacation to Mexico and are murdered brutally. And the mystery here is that like, there's, whether they were, it, I can't even explain it well, partially because I don't normally talk about mystery, so I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, but also because like the mystery felt so incredibly pointless here. Um, partially because it felt like, why is this even something that's being investigated? Like why uh even though you know obviously because it's a mystery there's something deeper than we expected but that's all of the twists that came in like the third act were just so bad and the whole thing just dragged it felt like it could have been a 40 minute tv show it didn't need to be a several or hour long audiobook so it just it bored me i wasn't into it i'm not gonna i'm gonna try more mysteries but like I don't know if this is exemplary of the genre. It might not be something I'm going to enjoy. Um, these are both kind of disappointing for different reasons. Let's do my DNF. So the DNF for this season, and I, I had more DNFs, but the DNF that I DNF, I didn't finish be specifically because of how much I was hating it, was Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. I like Joe Hill. I have, I read the entire Lock and Key series and loved it. And then I read Nosferatu, which is, I think, his most recent work, and it was great. It was the first horror in a long time that I've read and actually made me feel scared because it's not something I've experienced while reading a book. So I was like, man, I love Joe Hill. And I, like, went through a bunch of his, and I think this was one of the higher-rated books, but it's also his debut, which I did not realize when I picked it up. Oh, it was not good. So this is a story, there's a guy who just likes to collect oddities and decides to buy a haunted suit from eBay. And it sounded a little kitschy, a little bit goofy, but I was like, eh, maybe, maybe it's more, you know, the idea that a girl rides a bike and finds things sound kind of weird, so I'll go with it. Um, it was just, no. It was so fast paced, but not in an exciting way. It was just like things just changed and moved. It was full of a lot of really bad tropes. And like, not just like bad tropes, like, oh, it's tropey, I'm sick of seeing this, like really harmful tropes. Like, I don't remember the exact line, but the guy's thinking about his ex-girlfriend at one point and was like, yeah, she was really depressed and not in a cute way. And I was like, there is no cute way to be depressed, please. A lot of self-harm, a lot. And not handled remotely well. Um, it just was not good. It was, it was so bad and I, don't understand why. It felt like I was reading a Stephen King from the 90s, not the Joe Hill nuanced horror that I had come to expect from the small, admittedly small sample of Joe Hill works I had read. And then finally, my last book, this is so disappointing to me, was Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. Now, I haven't read any other Margaret Atwood. I kind of had thought about reading um, The Handmaid's Tale, but it's never really drawn me in. But this conceptually sounded so good. So this is take the Odyssey and tell it from Penelope's perspective. And specifically, the synopsis talks about the fact that when Odysseus came back, he hanged all the suitors, which is like, or he killed all the suitors. He didn't hang them. He killed all the suitors, which is like, man, that's pretty brutal, but maybe something you would expect. But then he also hanged the 13 or the 12 maids that were attending to Penelope during that time. And so this is like presented as telling their side of the story. Why did this happen? What was going on? And it doesn't even do that. 
The entire thing is told from Penelope's perspective and she is the worst. She is just so... I don't know the words to use. Wait, feminist turfy? She gives turf vibes. That's where I'm gonna go with. She gives turf vibes. Not that that came up in any way, but that's that's kind of it. Um, there's some like spoiler examples I could give to like talk about why she gave off this vibe, but the book was full of a lot of girl hate. The like way Penelope just vis viscerally hates Helen just because Helen is like attractive and likes men. Like Penelope just hates her. Um, the way she treats her maids, there's things like sexual assault that happen and are like played off as like, it's okay because they wanted it. Um, and all of this was like, I was like holding out for the end because I was like, well in the end we're gonna be like, Penelope is an unreliable narrator, you know, we're not supposed to like her and that twist never came. <laughs> and so it was just awful. It was awful. Anyway, those would be my tops and bottoms. Highs and lows. Ooh, I think I'll go with highs and lows. You'll see the title. So I'll decide what I'm calling it. But I think highs and lows for spring of 2021. If you are still interested in seeing everything that I read, I have been, I have started now and have been updating a thread of books read in 2021 as I finish them. This doesn't include things like DNFs because quite frankly, I DNF a lot of books, not a lot, I DNF books just because they're not vibing with me. I don't think it's always useful to like advertise when I DNF a book. But um, if you're interested, you can follow me on Twitter and you will see when I do that. Uh, there are a lot of Wheel of Time tweets that I do and also a lot of just nonsense. But for the most part, yeah. It's also Ben's account, so sometimes he'll post stuff there. But if you want to stay up to date with everything I read as I read it, that's going to be your best bet. Or follow me on Storygraph, which will also have a link. Or follow me on Storygraph, which will also have a link down below. You can also find us on Instagram, which I haven't updated in like four months. Or um, find our podcast on Podbean or wherever you get podcasts. I think that covers everything. I'm trying to get better about like the end stuff and I'm really bad at it. Anyway, let me know below what is the best book you read this spring and should I read it because I need to add more books to the 500 book list on Storygraph of books I want to eventually read. Anyway, love you, bye.